war, poverty, terrorism. There are many problems with the world today, kids, but fear not. The Pick Boy Edge Carbon Nylon 1.14 millimeter is here to solve all your woes. I'm Ben Eller, and this pick is sick. <laughs> Hello kids and welcome to This Pick is Sick, here's the good pal, Uncle Ben. On this show I'm going to be sharing information with you guys about all of my favorite picks I've used over the years, from normal everyday burners all the way to high-end boutique handmade stuff. But I figure, what better pick to start with than the one that has been my constant companion for the last decade plus of my playing. Now let's talk about some specs on this bad boy. So right here we've got a regular Dunlop pick on the left and we've got a Jazz 3 on the right. That way you can get an idea of how this guy falls in line size-wise. It really is right in between the two. It's got the good sharp point of a Jazz, but it's just got a little bit more to hold on to like a regular pick does. Without being, you know, too big and cumbersome. If this guy is your classic granny panty and this guy is your sporty G-string, I would say that this pick is landing us right around thong territory. You can see in this close-up shot here that it's got a raised kind of bumpy grip and that's on both sides of it like that. It's not quite as grippy as like a Dunlop Max grip, which frankly I find a little too grippy. I find that I can't really move them around and adjust them in my fingers if I want to. But at the same time this adds just enough grip to where it's not really going to slide around in your fingers too much, but you can still move it around if you like. You can see it's emblazoned on the back with Edge, which apparently the rumor that I heard about this is is that this was initially like the signature pick of the edge of U2 which is pretty much the only thing about it that I don't like. Pickboy makes this pick in several different thicknesses and they make it out of three different materials. Uh, this one, the kind of blackish graphite looking one is carbon nylon. They also do it in a gold material that they call Ultem which I think is very similar to like the Dunlop Altex kind of material. And they've got another one that's clear, I can't remember what they call it. Of the three of those, I find that I like the carbon nylon one the best. Um, the, the gold one sounds good, that's kind of a close second for me, but it's not quite as pronounced on the attack as the carbon nylon is. The clear ones are okay, they tend to wear out a little bit faster I found, plus if you drop them, they're just a goner. So, I prefer the black ones, personally. Pickboy makes this pick in all kinds of different thicknesses, starting off from about a medium gauge pick, like around 0.77 millimeter and working its way up from there onto this one, which is the heaviest, which is 1.14 millimeters. I find that I usually don't use picks that are uh, thinner than 1.25 millimeters or so. I don't really like a pick to have any give to it. And honestly, typically a pick that's 1.14 will be a little bit too flexible for my tastes. But due to whatever this uh, miraculous material they're using is, it is unusually stiff. I would say that this is about as stiff as a pick that's you know, about 1.3 or 1.4 millimeters, but it's only 1.14. Uh, to me, that's a really great thing about this pick. It doesn't take up a lot of room in between the strings, but it behaves like a much thicker pick. In addition to being a nearly perfect grip and shape for my taste, this pick also has a really fantastic attack to it, which is one of my favorite things about it. I've recorded so much stuff using one of these picks. Um, pretty much everything I ever recorded with my old band Ark and Human Fuse, uh, even the stuff that I've recorded with those guest spots on the Whitechapel records and stuff like that, it's pretty much all been this guy right here. It's got a really nice sound to it. So let's check out a couple of sound clips here so you can experience the magic as well.
in action we're going to go over it and grade it in four different categories on a scale of one to ten to let you know how it holds up we're going to be rating in terms of grip attack durability and value thanks to the awesome grippy surface on the front and back sides of the pick this thing really never slides around in my hand at all but at the same time it's not so grippy that I can't maneuver it I'm gonna give this pick a grip statistic of a nine it's pretty much perfect but I'm gonna leave ten for something that just completely blows my mind Amazing grip, really like this guy. As you could probably tell from the clips that I gave you there, this pick has a really, really great defined pick attack to it. It's not like a super obnoxious chirpy sound like you can get with some of the really ultra heavyweight picks, but it's not just like a smooth, flappy kind of sound either. I really, really like this guy. Of course, I do like the sound of the uh, attack of the pick on the string, so if you're looking for that really smooth, velvety, uh, like the red Jazz 3 kind of sound, think early Petrucci or um, Air Johnson kind of sound, that swishy, smooth sound. It's not exactly that. This is more of a Paul Gilberty kind of scratchy sound that I really like, especially for rhythms and stuff like that. You can really hear where the side of the pick hits the uh, the winds of the string. I really enjoy that sound personally. So in terms of the attack, for my taste, I'm going to give this a solid seven. Now as for durability, I find these things to be pretty dang good actually. They last a little bit longer than a standard guitar pick. They're not going to last you forever or anything like that, but they're pretty cheap so you can deal with it. This guy has had probably about two or three hours worth of play on it and you can see the tip of the pick is still very sharp. There's not really any wear on the edges or anything like that, so it's a pretty good indicator. The ones that they make of the other materials, like that gold material I talked about earlier, the Altam, as well as the clear ones. I found that they wear a little faster uh, than these carbon nylon ones. The only downside I can really say about these is that I've noticed sometimes after I've played on one for a while, uh, I'll have some black dust on my picking hand fingertips. I guess where the pick is just wearing away one atom at a time or something. Uh, not really something I usually experience with picks, so that is one kind of odd thing about this. But it never rubs off on my finish or pickups or anything, and all you got to do is just rub it off your fingers and it's gone. So. Not really that big of a deal. Just thought I'd put that out there. I would say overall for durability, I would give these a good old six, slightly above average. And lastly, we're gonna rate the overall value of this pick in terms of what you pay for it and what you're getting out of it. You can usually find these on Amazon or eBay as well as some various music stores websites for about 60 cents to a dollar each. Of course, if you're buying a larger number of them, like a bag of 20 or 50, uh, the cost of those will go down. Uh, considerably, but usually you can expect to pay about 75 cents on average for one of these. So that means that if you lose one, you don't really have to freak out. If one starts to wear out and you want to throw it away, it's no big deal. Uh, they also respond really well to that good old sharpening on the carpet trick. So once the edge of it starts getting uh, a little bit worn down, you can usually sharpen them a few times on the rug and they'll come back to life just fine. So again, you don't really pay that much for these things, a little more than an average pick, but they last a little longer and they definitely feel and sound a lot better. So I would rate the value of this pick at about a solid eight. So with four categories and 10 possible points each, that gives us a maximum total score of 40. This pick earned a nine on grip, a seven on attack, a durability of six, and an overall value of eight, which gives this pick an overall score of 30 out of 40 points, which means this pick 
is sick. So there you go, kids, a good look at the pick that has been an extension of Uncle Ben's right hand for well over a decade now. I never really see other dudes talk about these picks very much. Of course, everybody's all about Jazz 3s or the Jazz 3 XL and lots of other picks. But if you've tried those and you're just looking for something a little different or maybe something a little bit more to hold on to than a Jazz with a really interesting material that is way stiffer feeling than it seems like it should be, check these guys out. Again, pretty easy to find online. I usually snag them off of eBay or Amazon. Thank you guys so much for watching the first ever episode of This Pick is Sick. Uh, be sure to drop me some comments and stuff and let me know if there's any pick you would like to see me cover or any change in format that I should take into consideration. Over the past couple weeks, I've received a handful of new picks from some various manufacturers that I think you'd be interested to find out about. So be sure to stay tuned and I'll be featuring those on my show in the next couple of weeks. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel as well as follow my antics on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Guitars. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more cool shit soon. Take it easy.